this liquid it changes into vapor phase and the pressure which is exerted by the vapor phase on the liquid is called as vapor pressure for what you have to remember is for ideal solutions this aa interactions and bb interactions will be equal to ab interactions as well the ideal solutions and non ideal solutions ideal solutions obeys the rolls law yes non ideal solutions they do not obey rolls law hello everyone this is ambli unnikrishnan from the department of chemistry vidyashram school of excellence mysore so today we are back with session 4 of the chapter solutions yes so in last session we discussed about the solubility of gas in a liquid right under which we studied henry's law and the different applications of henry's law as well and then we started about the next topic that was vapor pressure of liquid solutions right so in the last session we discussed about the vapor pressure of liquid liquid solutions right wherein the solute and solvent both of them are volatile that is both of them are liquids right so in today's session we will be discussing about the vapor pressure of solid in liquid solutions right in last session it was liquid liquid solutions right here we are going to study about solid liquid solutions wherein the solute will be a solid right okay now after that we will be discussing about ideal and not ideal solutions and the next topic will be azeotropes and the different types of azeotropes okay so beginning with the first one that is vapor pressure of solid in liquid solutions so solid liquid solution means the solute will be a solid and the solvent is a liquid right so what we are going to study here is when a solid that is a non volatile solute right solid is non volatile right so when a non volatile solute that is basically a solid when a non volatile solute is added to a volatile solvent that is when a solid is being added to water yes what happens to the vapor pressure of the solution we are going to study how it changes whether it decreases or increases or remains constant right all of it we are going to study yes so according to rolls law what we have studied for a solution the partial vapor pressure of each component is directly proportional to its mole fraction we have studied in last session that is if i am considering the component 1 the partial pressure of the component 1 in the solution will be directly proportional to its mole fraction right that is what we have studied under rolls law so if to remove the proportionality i can write it as p1 is equal to p01 into yes chi1 yes we have studied this this is rolls law so this was in the case of liquid liquid solutions right so if there is another component that is we are talking about two components there row right so it will be p2 not into chi2 so that will be the partial pressures of the first and second component this was in case of liquid liquid solutions now coming on to solid in liquid solutions okay so first let us consider only the pure solvent okay only the pure solvent that we are considering we haven't added the solute yet okay so in the case of only pure solvent what happens what is vapor pressure right this liquid it changes into vapor phase and the pressure which is exerted by the vapor phase on the liquid is called as vapor pressure right so in the case of pure solvent yes let's consider it as water yes if only water is present there now the water vapor which the pressure is applied by the water vapor on the water is called as vapor pressure right so that will be p1 not okay yes only pure solvent that is why p1 not is there now what i am doing is the solute is also added that is the non volatile solute okay that is the solid now a non volatile solute is added into it okay now what happens as you can see here some green balls are also being shown in this diagram okay so that means yes on the surface of the liquid yes this solid particles will be there right that is our non volatile solute is present so what happens yes the amount or the number of molecules getting converted into vapor phase will decrease right see now on the surface the solute particles are blocking 
the solvent particles to get converted into vapor phase and apply a pressure which is called as vapor pressure right so if more number of solute particles are present there what happens the amount or the number of particles getting converted into vapor phase will reduce right so in this case more number was there but once the solute is being added because it is present in the surface the number of solvent particles which is getting converted into vapor phase is decreasing right and we know that the solute is non volatile so will it get converted into vapor phase no right so what i am trying to say is in the case of solid liquid solution only the partial pressure of the yes solvent will be there right is solute contributing to the vapor pressure no right it is non volatile yes and also what you have to remember once the solute is added the vapor pressure is decreasing it will not be equal to that of the pure solvent right it was p1 not now it becomes p1 right but is there a p2 that is the partial vapor pressure exerted by the solute is there no right it is non volatile so in this case p1 will be equal to p no p1 not into chi1 that is of the yes that is of the solvent and no presence of solute will be there because it is non volatile so like in the case of liquid liquid solutions yes what did we study both were volatile yes in this case yes the solute is non volatile so only the contribution of solvent will be there for the vapor pressure i hope it is clear so how can you write the rolls law yes how can you write the rolls law for the yes solid and liquid solution it will be just for the one component that is the solvent i hope it is clear the difference between the vapor pressure by liquid liquid solutions and in solid liquid solutions yes i hope it is clear now moving on to the next topic that is ideal and non ideal solutions okay so the binary solution of the volatile liquids can be classified into two types okay yes that are ideal solutions and non ideal solutions so so from the name itself you can say ideal we say an ideal student okay which abides by the rules and regulations and everything of the college right so same way what are ideal solutions right let's see ideal solutions are solutions which obeys rolls law at all concentration range okay it obeys rolls law at any concentration okay the solution will obey rolls law so such solutions are called as ideal solutions okay yes so an example for it is benzene and toluene right chloroform and bromobenzene yes n hexane and n heptane okay so these are few examples of ideal solutions so what you have to understand is there are no solutions which are exactly ideal solutions right but these are the few examples which almost behaves as ideal solutions okay so ideal solutions are solutions which obey rolls law at any concentration range okay now what you have to understand here is okay let's take this diagram okay now in the first diagram there is only the solvent particles which is present that is represented by a right only the solvent is present so what in type of interactions will be there it will be a a interaction that is interaction between solvent and solvent particles now in the second diagram it is only the solute which is present which is represented by b okay so the interactions there will be b b interactions right only solute is present there now what i am doing is i am mixing it now i get the solution which is containing the solvent and the solute now it becomes a solution right so now what interactions will be there now a b interactions will be there right in this case only a a interaction there only b b interactions here a b interactions come right so for what you have to remember is for ideal solutions this a a interactions and b b interactions will be equal to a b interactions as well right in ideal solution the solvent a solute b interaction that is the a b interaction are equal to the solute solute interactions and solvent solvent interactions respectively so all of this interactions will be equal in case of ideal solution that is a a interactions will be equal to b b interactions and that will be equal to the interactions that in 
present in solutions also okay now another important thing what you have to remember is that is delta mix h is equal to 0 and delta mix b is equal to 0 now what is this right so you know h stands for the enthalpy change right so from the pure solute and pure solvent if we are mixing it and preparing the solution okay there will be no heat change okay there will be no difference in change there okay yes no increase or decrease in change that is why the delta sign stands for the change in uh, enthalpy right so that will be equal to zero right so before and after the mixing of the solution the total enthalpy change will be equal to zero that means there is no absorption or emission of heat that is happening now delta mix b is also equal to zero that is no change in volume so for example let me say i'm taking 100 ml of solvent and 20 ml of solute right so if i mix it in ideal solutions i will be getting 120 ml of the yes solution that means before mixing it and after mixing it there is no change in volume it will be the same that is why it is delta v is also equal to zero so this is also important in case of the ideal solutions right now moving on to the next one that is non-ideal solutions right so from this itself you can identify right non-ideal they are not ideal solutions right so a solution which does not obey Rolle's law at all concentration range is called as non-ideal solutions in certain concentration they might obey the Rolle's law but at all concentration they might not be obeying the Rolle's law so such types of solutions are called as non-ideal solutions yes few examples are HCl and water ethyl alcohol and water ethanol and acetone these are few examples so from the diagram the same diagram that we have discussed here what did we study in case of ideal solutions the aa interactions and bb interactions will be equal to ab interactions right but in the case of non-ideal solutions this won't be true the aa interactions and bb interactions either it will be greater than ab interactions or either it will be yes lesser than the ab interactions right it won't be equal and the next important point is yes now the delta v and delta h will not be equal to zero right so in this case they are non-ideal solutions so there will be a volume change and there will be an enthalpy change as well associated with the mixing of the solute and solvent forming the solution I hope it is clear. Now, the force of attraction between AB molecules will be greater or lesser than the AA and BB interactions. Okay. So, that is clear, right? So, the AA and BB interactions will not be equal to the AB interactions in case of non-ideal solutions. Right. So, now let's quickly differentiate between, yes, the ideal solutions and non-ideal solutions. Ideal solutions obeys the Rolle's law yes non-ideal solutions they do not obey Rolle's law right now the delta v and delta h will be equal to zero in the ideal solutions no change in volume and no change in enthalpy and here there will be a change in enthalpy as well as change in volume taking place right now here in this case that is ideal solutions aa bb and ab interactions are equal yes in this case the intermolecular attractive forces that is aa and bb will not be equal to the ab interactions present in the solution clear now you have to understand that yes that is in non-ideal solutions itself there are two types of solutions that is non-ideal solutions with positive deviation and non-ideal solutions with negative deviation right so there are two types that is positive deviations and the solutions showing negative deviation okay so solutions are of two type yes ideal solutions and non-ideal solutions and under non-ideal solutions you have yes the non-ideal solutions showing positive deviation and negative deviation okay so first let's begin with positive deviation okay so the solutions for which the total vapor pressure is higher than that of an ideal solution of same composition and temperature are called solution with positive deviation so you remember this graph we have plotted for vapor pressure right vapor pressure versus mole fraction right so in this case as you can see this dotted line which is shown here yes this dotted line which is shown here it was supposed to be the yes graph under ideal solutions right under ideal conditions the dotted line would represent the vapor pressure but 
for positive deviation the vapor pressure is greater than what it is expected under ideal conditions so now you can see the bold lines it is greater right it is greater than the yes it is greater than the expected value yes this is for the a component and this is for the p component and this is the p total which is equal to p a plus p b right so now why this positive deviation is shown i hope you understood the graph now we are understanding why it is showing the positive deviation so the solute solute and solvent solvent interactions are stronger than the solute solvent interactions okay so we studied that there are a a interactions that is just between the solvents there are b b interactions between the solute and there are a b interactions which is present in the solution right so in positive deviation what you have to understand the a a and b b interactions are stronger than the a b interactions so the a b interactions that is in the solution the interaction between the solute and solvent they are less okay that is solute solute that is the b b interactions and the solvent solvent interactions that is the a a interactions are stronger than the a b interactions so why now as i said the a a and b b interactions are stronger now so they are stronger and the a b interactions are weaker now once the solution is formed the a b interactions are weaker means easily from the solution the liquid can get converted into vapor phase yes as the interactions that is the ab interactions are weak that means easily it can get converted into vapor phase and hence the vapor pressure also increases right so ideally it was supposed to be like this because the ab interactions are weaker the liquid can easily get converted into vapor phase and exert a vapor pressure hence the vapor pressure is more than what it is supposed to be under ideal conditions hence it is showing a positive deviation so if pa is the partial vapor pressure of the component a and pb is the partial vapor pressure of component b then according to rolls law we have studied pa equals p not a into ki a right now in this case what happens the partial vapor pressure of component a will be greater right than expected in ideal conditions it not it will not be equal and pb will be greater than p not b into ki b and yes hence delta h and delta value uh, delta h and delta v value will not be equal to zero that will be also greater than zero right so the total vapor pressure is more than expected from rolls law yes now an example for it is solution of ethanol and acetone okay solution of ethanol and acetone is an example for it so in the case of acetone it is having hydrogen bond and once ethanol is added to acetone what happens yes few of the hydrogen bonds which is present in the acetone is being broken by the ethanol which is being added so few bonds are broken yes that means the interactions is becoming less right so easily the liquid can get, get converted into vapor phase hence the vapor pressure also increases so that is about positive deviation now the next one is negative deviation non ideal solutions showing negative deviation so the solution for which the total vapor pressure is lower than that of the ideal solution of same composition and temperature are called as non ideal solutions showing negative deviation right so they will be having a total vapor pressure which is lower than the ideal solution so in the same way you can see in the graph yes the dotted line represents the yes graph which was supposed to be when it is in ideal conditions so now what we are getting for the component pb it is like this for component p it is here and the p total that is the total vapor pressure is you can see it is lesser than what it is expected to be in the case of ideal solutions hence it is showing a negative deviation so from uh, what we have studied in positive deviations you can understand easily why it is showing a negative deviation so same way we know that there are a a interactions b b interactions and in the solution there is a b interactions so in the case of solution showing negative deviation the a b interactions will be stronger okay a b interactions will be stronger than the a a and b b interactions so if this is stronger that is in the solution the interactions if it is stronger will they be easily able to get converted into vapor phase from the liquid will it be easily converted into vapor phase 
no right because the strong um, interactions ab interactions are stronger there so what happens yes the vapor pressure also decreases because yes the extent to which the vaporization is happening is less so the vapor pressure also decreases yes hence it is showing negative deviation okay so in the same way if you are considering pa and pb the partial vapor pressures of the component a and b that is so solvent and solute respectively yes pa will be less than pa in pa not into chi a and pb will be less than pb not into chi b yes it will not be equal to zero and yes delta h and delta v value will be less than zero yes i hope it is clear now the total vapor pressure is less than as expected from rolls law yes according to rolls law this must be equal right but in this case at is, as it is showing negative deviation the values will be less than what it is supposed to be in the rolls law an example for is this is solution of acetone and aniline so when we mix acetone and aniline what happens is a new bond is formed here between the hydrogen and oxygen yes a new hydrogen bond is formed here right in the case of positive deviation when ethanol was being added to acetone few hydrogen bonds were broken but in this case when we mix acetone and aniline few bonds are formed there right few hydrogen bonds are formed here so new bonds are formed means yes the interactions will be more now from the solution state yes that is a liquid state it can't get easily converted into vapor phase hence the vapor pressure also decreases that is why it is showing negative deviation i hope it is clear now moving on to the next concept that is azeotropes okay now what is azeotropes they are binary liquid mixtures binary liquid mixtures means the liquid mixtures having only two components right binary means two right having the same composition in liquid and vapor phase and boils at constant temperature okay so they are having the same composition same composition in liquid and vapor phase and yes they boil at a constant temperature having same composition in liquid and vapor phase means now will they be able to easily get separated no right in the liquid phase and in the vapor phase they are having the same composition so now it becomes for them to separate it right okay and they boils at a constant temperature as well okay now few examples for it is 95 percentage ethyl alcohol and 5 percentage water by volume so if a concentration that is 95 percentage of ethyl alcohol and 5 percentage water by volume is obtained now this is an azeotropic mixture or you can say this is an azeotrope so now in this condition in this state that is 95 percentage ethyl alcohol and 5 percentage water by volume if this concentration is attained now the yes that is in liquid phase and in vapor phase yes the composition will be same now it is difficult to or now it is not possible to separate the different components right so another example is 68 percentage nitric acid and 32 percentage water by mass okay now even there are two types of azeotropes that is minimum boiling azeotropes and maximum boiling azeotropes so what are minimum boiling azeotropes the solutions which show large positive deviation from rolls law are called as minimum boiling azeotropes so the yes we studied in non ideal solutions right positive deviations and negative deviations so the solutions which are showing positive deviation they comes under the category of minimum boiling azeotropes okay yes positive deviation they are showing positive deviation means their interactions are less interactions are less means yes only a little amount of boiling point is required right a little amount of boiling it can easily get get uh, converted into vapor phase hence they are called as minimum boiling azeotropes right yes as the interactions are already weak there in the solutions yes we need not apply a lot of uh, energy to it for it to get converted into vapor phase hence minimum boiling azeotropes yes ethanol 95.5 percentage and yes water 4.5 percentage forms a yes minimum boiling azeotropes and it boils at the temperature 351.15 kelvin another example is ethanol of 6.8 percentage and chloroform 93.2 percentage and it boils at 
a temperature 332.3 Kelvin. So, at this particular temperature, yes, in the solution phase and in the vapor phase, there will be having the same composition and it will not be able to separate them. Yes, we will not be able to easily separate them. Right. Now, what is maximum boiling azeotropes? Yes, so maximum boiling azeotropes are solutions which are showing, yes, negative deviation, right. They show large negative deviation from Rolle's law, okay. So why they are called as maximum boiling azeotropes? Yes, because they are showing negative deviations. So we studied in negative deviations, that is non-ideal solutions, showing negative deviations is the interactions, AB interactions are very strong, right. If the interactions are strong, Yes, if we want to convert the liquid phase into vapor phase, yes, more amount of energy is required to break them, the break the bonds and convert it into vapor phase, right? Hence, maximum boiling azeotropes. And yes, there are few examples for it as well, right? Ammonia, 68 percentage and water, 32 percentage. Yes, it boils, that is the azeotrope mixture it boils it's 393.5 kelvin another example is water at 43 percentage and yes hi 57 percentage which boils at 400 kelvin now this azeotrope will be difficult to separate it because it is having same composition in the liquid and vapor phase so i hope you are clear with what is a zeotrope, right? They are, yes, liquid mixtures containing only two components in which they have the same composition in liquid and vapor phase. So once they attain this composition of an zeotrope, yes, now it will be difficult for them to separate it. I hope it is clear and there are two types of azeotropes, minimum boiling azeotropes and maximum boiling azeotropes. Yes, minimum boiling azeotropes shows positive deviation and maximum boiling azeotropes shows negative deviation and I hope you understood the reason also why they are called so, right? So, yes, let's quickly differentiate between the two that is positive deviation and negative deviation. Yes, in the case of positive deviation, delta H and delta V will be greater than zero and yes, the AB interactions will be weaker than the AA and BB interactions and they form the minimum boiling azeotropes. Right. And now coming on to negative deviations. Right. Delta H and delta V will be less than zero. Yes. The AB interactions will be stronger than AA and BB interactions and they form the maximum boiling azeotropes. So I hope it is clear. So in the next session, we will be discussing about colligative properties, which is a very important concept. Right under which you have to study four colligative properties out of which three we will be studying in the next session that is relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point and depression in freezing point. Right. So I hope what and all we have discussed in this session is clear for you. So that's all for today. Thank you.